Do you think there is an upper limit to human aging? Well, I know there isn't. You there, know there is not. Yeah. We've been able to extend the lifespan of every species that we've tried to extend the lifespan of, and we're no different from those species. There is no law that says we must age. Remember that. We've made a, a major breakthrough in our understanding of not just why we age, but also how to control that process. We needed to know if it was safe. It's, it's very safe. It's a gift to humanity. It's already here in the next 18 months or two years, testing our first age reversal clinical trial in humans. The whole brain is reversible. We haven't published this, so you've heard it here first. You will be able to rejuvenate your brain and get back memories, get your ability to learn again. I haven't injected myself yet. I think it's a universal process of biology to be able to re be reset. A whole body reset is coming. You can reset multiple times. On come these repair genes, your nerves regrow, your spine regenerates. What we want to do is we want to turn those gene therapies into a pill. I already have some molecules in the lab that uh, show signs of age reversal. Welcome to Lifespan News. I'm your host, Emmett Short. My last video on David Sinclair's new research into an age reversal pill did a lot better than usual. So forgive us if we're trying to double dip. It's at like 50,000 views, I think, as of right now. So if you haven't seen that, make sure you go check that out. But you guys had a lot to say about it. So stick around to the end of this video because I'll be commenting on some of your comments. And speaking of comments, make sure to follow us on X and for all the latest articles on new longevity research, visit lifespan.io. But first, the mad scientist, David Sinclair, this time with Peter Diamandis at Abundance360, is giving more details into human trials for the genetic engineering side of the technology versus the chemical pill side of the technology. Which would you want more? Leave it in the comments. And I'm gonna play the best parts and add my commentary along the way. Let's go. Aging isn't just damage to the body like we wear out. It's actually a loss of information. So this is a key principle in David Sinclair's research. It means most of the progress humanity has made in traditional medicine to repair the macro systems of the body like a worn out heart, worn out knees, etc., could be obsolete in the future. If you can rejuvenate at the cellular level, then everything made out of cells, which is everything, will become young again. He's essentially trying to communicate with the programming language of cells through the use of genetic proteins called the Yamanaka factors. And with his recent research, communicating through chemical cocktails. My personal favorite way to communicate. But most of what he's talking about at the beginning of this interview is the genetic intervention style accomplished with the Yamanaka factors delivered by hijacking a virus. We were able to control the aging process in a colony of mice, driving them forwards and backwards in their age and making them get diseases. Um, and now we're even reversing those. Diabolical, and I'll allow it. Do you think there is an upper limit to human aging? Uh, well, I know there isn't. You there, know there is not. Yeah. yeah, it's not even a question. <laughs> Drop the mic moment. <laughs> Let me explain. Okay, before we go much further, I do want to address a lot of the comments from the last video about whether or not David Sinclair can be trusted. Look at how many comments are throwing shade at David Sinclair. And a few of these comments actually touch on real controversies surrounding David Sinclair. Sinclair has sold his patent for the revolutionary drug to the company. Then the latter went bankrupt after a couple of years because their research on that drug didn't prove anything. If that's not suspicious, I don't know what is. Hey, I don't know if it's suspicious, but it is true that David's research led him to create a biotech company. At the time, David was quoted as saying things about resveratrol, like it's as close to a miraculous molecule as you can find. For more on the resveratrol controversy, we have a video on that, and there's an article as well linked in the description. Something else that was not a good look for David Sinclair was blocking the former dean of his alma mater, Harvard, because of the whole hubbub around the resveratrol controversy. Honestly, some of this doesn't look great, but it's also hard to know what the nuances are and how much they matter. Because as this other comment points out, the paper in question involved several other high-profile researchers, not just Sinclair. 
Caution is of course wise, but Sinclair being one of the many authors is not a huge red flag. Also, they did move to primate trials that have already been successful, and now they expect human trials in a matter of months. And by the way, the guy continues to be a Harvard professor and head of a research department at Harvard. So I'm afraid I can't give you a definitive answer on the David Sinclair controversy. So I am going to err on the side of optimism, and I'm going to take a gamble that the Harvard professor knows what he's talking about. Call me crazy, but that's what I'm going with. We've been able to extend the lifespan of every species that we've tried to extend the lifespan of, and we're no different from those species. There are many species who are very similar to us, genetically, biologically, that live a lot longer than we do. Uh, the best example would be the bowhead whale, but a lot of whales live longer than us. There is no law that says we must age. Remember that. I think we all believe that. Otherwise, why are we still watching this video, right? Tell us about the breakthrough. We've made a, a major breakthrough in our understanding of not just why we age, but also how to control that process. There's a backup copy of information in every cell, in every, every body's cells, um, and that that backup copy can be accessed. And there's a switch that you can flip that allows cells to reset their biological age and function again as though they were young, because literally they are young again. And that fact that there is a backup copy changes everything. We're no lo I'm no longer talking about slowing aging. I'm talking about true age reversal multiple times. We made this discovery that you can uh, reset the age of cells, human tissue, mouse tissue, living mice. Okay, good. I'm glad he clarified living mice. Otherwise, it's like, well, we kind of cured aging, but there's this slight snag. Uh, how does everyone feel about the term undead? Is there a market for zombie pills? No? Okay, back to the drawing board. We're now growing uh, human brains. That's new. So on the left, we have uh, cerebral organoids grown from human tissue. I think we're the only lab now that can make these brains get really old. We can make them 70 years old within a matter of weeks. Now they, they develop dementia. We can measure that with these electrodes on the right. Out of context, that sounds crazy. Like if he was not trying to cure aging, you'd be like, is this a supervillain? And we do re reverse the age of those and they get their thinking ability back, whatever that is. We do see the electrical activity come back. The whole brain is reversible. Yeah, I've got some memories I'd like to reverse. We can reverse the age of an old mouse's brain so they have dementia. We just give them an intravenous injection of our therapy, turn it on for four weeks, and those mice have a young brain and they have their ability to learn again. Well, it's my prediction that uh, we'll be um, in the next 18 months or two years testing our first age reversal a uh, clinical trial in humans to cure blindness. This guy knows how to get funding. He's straight up copying Mr. Beast. Hey, it worked for him. What works in the eye, in the optic nerves, the nerve cells, works in the epithelial cells in the retina, works in the outer layer of cells on the retina, works in the kidney we just published, the muscle. You know, if it works in all those different cell types, um, I think it's a universal process of biology to be able to re be reset. And uh, so that's why I'm, I'm not exaggerating when I think a whole body reset is coming. I haven't injected myself yet. I'm probably not gonna do that for a few years. I love that he's talking about injecting himself. This is the kind of mad scientist I can get behind. David Sinclair is so much cooler than Brian Johnson. Brian Johnson, who's out there eating nothing but pills and shooting lasers into his dick and wearing halter tops, drinking his son's blood. Hey, to each their own, but you know, I like the guy who's quietly curing blindness and one day you'll be like, wait, you look like a teenager. Did you, you took it, didn't you? You look prepubescent, you son of a, but I mean, how long before they can cure more than just blindness? As far as I'm aware, nobody else is developing a product that has an on off switch. We have exquisite control over when these genes come on for safety reasons, but also because we now know in the mice at least, you can reset multiple times so that you'll have this treatment, your body will be filled with these genes, they'll be off. And we, if we get sick or if we get injured or if we get too old, we can take a course of an antibiotic for a couple of months and get reset every time. Or if we're in the emergency room, they give you an infusion of doxycycline. On come these repair genes, your nerves regrow, your spine regenerates, etc. So we needed to know if it was safe. It's, it's very safe. We've never seen anything negative after years of work and driving this process. We found that those three genes 
O, S, and K for short. These are uh, gene regulators that set off a cascade of events during embryogenesis to make a young human. Turns out, lucky for all of us, I think, is that those three genes also set back the clock in adult cells without causing tumors or any disease. And this is the thing that, that blows my mind, is you'd think that if you just keep it on for a long time, you'd go back to zero, age zero, which you don't want. Cells go back about 80% and stop. There's a barrier that prevents them from going back to zero. It's a gift to humanity. Hey, speak for yourself, man. I wanna go full Benji buttonhole. I wanna get all, look who's talking up in here. That's a strong career move. In a future of AI full of robot workers, I'll be the creepy old baby guy. That guy gets booked. You know, I might mess around and go full tadpole. Don't limit me, dude. It's already here. It's just not available widely. Um, it's already here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I love how Peter Diamandis has to beg for applause for the Fountain of Youth. I think people are either in awe or they just don't believe it's true. As many of you in the comments articulated. Right now it's a gene therapy, which means it's, it's going to be expensive and hard to uh, fulfill our dreams of changing humanity. What we want to do is we want to turn those gene therapies into a pill. So you can take a course of a pill and get the same effect. I already have some molecules in the lab that uh, show signs of age reversal. Uh, this is an area that's no longer the backwater of biology. It really, it's pharmaceutical development. And those that capture that land uh, will be the dominant industry of this century. The biotech revolution is imminent, and I personally don't think it'll be just for the wealthy. We saw the study done by London School of Business, uh, uh, Oxford, Harvard, that reducing age one year uh, in the global population adds $38 trillion to the global economy, so it really is an uplifting of, of humanity. You think we will get, as we get to volume, we will get to a point where this is accessible, affordable, and made available to everybody. Or I'll die trying. I too am optimistic, and you can call me naive for taking the word of a mere Harvard professor and director of research, but that's my take. Okay, it's time for your comments from the last video. I'm gonna read some. TomTube1012 says, if this is real, then Dr. Sinclair wouldn't look so old. Shots fired. Ouch, Tom. Ryan Astasang says, interestingly, we actually have immortal animals here on Earth. Absolutely right. There's, uh, I think, some jellyfish and lobster. I looked it up. Hastry Shack 551 says, if you take this pill, you might not be living very long after. It's all about the money, my dear. Pessimistic there, Pastry Shack. How does the economics of that work out? Things take off because they actually help people, not because they start killing people. This is a very weird way to think about the world, but hey, to each your own. It sounds like you're running a pretty depressing pastry shack. I like this one from James Sloth. James Slow, not Sloth, sorry about that. I would personally want to achieve grand master rank in every martial art, then go to college for a century or so learning multiple sciences. You could have no end to your potential. With all the time in the world, you'd be able to accumulate more wealth. Whew, yeah. He says, I want to live forever so I could see when society becomes something like Star Trek. Me three, buddy. Cody Hayes says, hopefully it's available soon so my grandpa can take it and we can do more stuff together. That is adorbs and sweet and i hope i hope you get that ad tech guide says oh boy it looks like soon we'll see 150 year old trumps and bidens running for president by the way how the heck are we going to manage the population growth imagine everyone gets to live 120 then the 70 year old men would no longer be in need of viagra as their libido would soar listen i mentioned this in the other video maybe we do want some older statesmen helping guide us in volatile times but right now i can safely say i don't want a 150 year old trump or biden running from president but the kibosh on both those guys as far as the libido there's another comment out here that's similar from jim j 2683 i wonder what will happen to the age of consent when people live hundreds of thousands of years, will it be creepy if a 300-year-old tried to flirt with a 70-year-old? That's This is the best comment. A 300-year-old getting canceled because they're in a relationship with a 70-year-old? It's like, when you were 70, she was negative, what, 230 or something? It is creepy, but then again, if they both look like they're 25 and feel 25, you guys tell me what you think. You think a 300-year-old going out with a 70-year-old is creepy? I don't this one's great. Methinks our idiot host's analysis of Earth's current vast overpopulation, climate catastrophe, 
pollution, dwindling resources might have permeated into his delusional whimsy. Ouch. Ouch, Bob Simpson. Well, listen, I'm going to leave a link in the description for why overpopulation is a myth. Feel free to check that out. Look, my view on climate change, uh, pollution, dwindling resources. There are a number of things we could do about those things without having crazy new technology that we could try first. But turns out we are making crazy new technology. So hopefully, and listen, I'm an optimist here, hopefully we can use those things, combine them to really sort of take control of the climate. So if you're gonna come at me for my optimism and call it delusional whimsy, then hey, I'm happy to be a little bit delusional and whimsical try it on. All right, guys, that's the show for today. Make sure you join us over on X. Subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined and definitely go check out all the latest articles on longevity science over at lifespan.io. I'll see you in the next one.